Welcome into Bad Movies Rule, the podcast where we celebrate movies that places like the Academy have ignored. And today, guys, you better play by the rules because we are the... We got Judge Dredd on the block. We're doing Judge Dredd today, guys. Yeah. I thought, I thought we were doing Judge Judy. Have you been watching Judge Judy all week? I have. Oh, that's a totally different movie. This is this is not going to go well for today. <laughs> she just rolls up on the big bike. Up, 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 up. I am the law. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> End the podcast right now. I can't. That's it. That's, 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 right, that's it's over. over. Our jokes are over. That's right. <laughs> judge Dredd, the movie about a cop who's also a judge, and everyone yells at each other for 90 minutes. And executioner. Yep. And, and executioner. executioner. Or no, actually, I'd say it's a movie about two long lost brothers who just who just don't understand each other. Don't understand. Yeah, no, they, they have a common ground that they yeah. achieve. The voice you just heard is Joseph Gorotowski. He's joining us today. Welcome, Joseph. Joseph, thanks for having me. I appreciate oh, of it. Of course, we've got Clint Bush back in the saddle. How you doing this morning, Clint? I'm doing pretty all right. Pretty all right. I'll take it. Yeah. And of course, we've got Bob Hauser here in a full tracksuit, looking magnificent this morning. How are you, Bob? I'm su- I'm uh, sporting my Tim Allen Santa Claus look from 1994. Nice. nice. I got the sweatpants and a sweatshirt on. And don't let anybody tell you you're not pulling it off, buddy. I will not. Can I get a bowl of ice cream? Yeah. Why is everybody yelling at each other in this movie? Every single scene in this movie is people screaming at each other. Well, I- it was to try and get over the bull- sound effects nobody could hear anything anybody was saying just like when we're watching the movie because the sound effects are too loud i actually think it just started with one person yelling and then you just kept going like oh 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 you know everybody's just going for that 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 next higher level it's like oh i gotta i gotta upstage this guy so you're saying they took it to the next level (gasps) i can't Uh, i'm leaving this room all right no 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 put sit back down (laughs) sit it's okay it's okay joe he didn't mean it he didn't mean it (laughs) what i wasn't ready for that actors tend to have some kind of, you know, let's let's call it professional jealousy when someone else is getting all the good stuff. And so someone's like, well, this guy's yelling, then I'm going to yell. Yeah. I think it's too much uh, pre-workout. <laughs> <laughs> what? Or testosterone, I mean. Oh, wait, do you think we could have been dealing with some roid, roid rage? rage? Roid rage. Pre-workout. No roid one rage. in this movie was on steroids. You ever taken pre-workout You see before? Rob Schneider? He was ripped. <laughs> That's why Stallone made him keep his shirt on the entire time. Exactly. He's like, you're not upstaging me yeah, in this not, movie. You're not taking the shirt off, okay? You leave it out, right? Okay. okay. You say no. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Times we're going to say I am the law. <laughs> At least 47 more Somebody times. Somebody started Get used to it. <laughs> we have the microphone. You don't sit there and shut up. <laughs> now, let's get the vitals out of the way real quick. So this movie was directed by... Danny Cannon, and this, the guys, we've got a long run in our first few episodes of Incredible Directors. This guy didn't do anything, but I don't even know how he got this job. He had done nothing. He did a poster. <laughs> he followed this up with a Ray Liotta straight-to-DVD movie, and then he directed the sequel to an already crappy movie. He did I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Oh, my God. He and, made that movie? Yeah, and then that was it. <laughs> so it was Dread. Ray Liotta, then that movie, and then he's now he's had a successful career since he's directed tons. I mean, he did like thirty episodes of CSI and like yeah. a bunch of TV shows. A lot of TV work now, I yeah. Guess. But as far as movies go, not not a great track record for Danny Cannon. Don't forget, this is another Stephen D'Souza co-written movie. Yeah, I saw <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, what are we seven, six or seven episodes deep, and we've already done three D'Souza movies. <laughs> On accident, I'm, t- I'm telling you, I'm not planning this. Please come on the show, Stephen. Please. <laughs> Street Fighter, <laughs> Hudson Hawk, and now Judge Dredd. I want Stephen on the show. So he actually co-wrote this with a guy named William Wisher, who co-wrote T2 with James Cameron and love, the first Terminator. I love William Wisher. What was he doing being a part of this movie? Who, William Wisher? Yeah. I like that guy. I mean, everybody's got to come from somewhere. I, I suppose. I don't know. The movie starred Sylvester Stallone, Armand Asante. Diane Lane, who had no business being in this movie, Rob Schneider, and Jurgen Prochnow's vibrating face. You forgot Max uh, <laughs> Maxwell von Sendow? Max von Sendow. Well, he's yes. just in every one of these types of movies. That's why I just feel like it goes without saying that Max von Sendow is in this movie. Yeah, You're right. But, 
Yeah, so guys, what's what's the flipping plot to this movie? It's like, I can't follow it. Well, it's a dystopian future mm -hmm. that has a lawlessness. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> 800 million people living in the ruin of the old world. <laughs> I thought you were about to go into like a full synopsis of it. Yeah, like, did you read the comic book over here? <laughs> Did anyone ever read the comic book? I didn't even know there was a comic book, so I did until the movie came out. I didn't. I always seen the uh, the two movies that they've given us. And you know how I knew it was a comic book? Because they start the movie off by going, "Look, this was a comic book." That's true. <laughs> it's like yeah, with that cool opening sequence it's with obvious. the comic book pages slipping. Well, I don't know if I'd call it a cool opening sequence, but it was cool. This was like I feel like back before they It is better than every opening sequence I've ever done for a movie. So That's true. That's good. At least we know where the bar is. But see, the the thing is this is before people were doing a lot of comic book movies and I feel like they didn't know how to jump into the subject matter and so in this case Danny Cannon with his deft touch was just like it's a comic book movie and I, we're, we're literally going to just they show had you the, the comic done. The movie yeah. was done. It was already edited. The whole thing was going and they're like, "Man, this really isn't all that great. You know, it doesn't really trail that well. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just show people that it was a comic book, and at least you didn't have to read it. You know, no. it saved everybody a lot of time. I do think that a lot of these movies that came out in the 90s, these comic book movies, definitely laid a foundation to some of the comic books we have now, you know, movies we have now. Sure. Their mistakes. <laughs> paved the way. For, they paved the way. Yeah. Have been learned. To from, how, you know, how but, to properly make a comic book movie. But were there any mistakes in this movie? Wasn't this the eh. perfect film? Eh. <laughs> there, was, there was at least one. Okay. I'm, uh, that's fair. I'll yeah. see if I can, as we go through it, if we can find at least one bad part of this cinematic masterpiece. Takes his helmet off. <laughs> Okay, people were upset about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that was the first downfall of the film. Because like, apparently, he ne in the book, he never, never takes, takes his, his helmet, helmet off. Nope, no. The 2012 uh, one. He never took his helmet yeah, off. Yeah, that's the point. And he puts it on in the 2012 version, but you never see his face. That the whole Apparently, the one time his helmet came off in the comic, they like did a black bar across his face to censor what it looked like, so they wouldn't yeah. even show it. That's how yeah. serious they were about not showing it. But do you think Sylvester Stallone was going to go through an entire movie nope. and be like, you're not, you're not going to cover up the moneymaker? Nope. Okay. <laughs> There's no I, way. I don't know what to say to that. But, yeah, I could, I could probably I could see There's Stallone no, be like, yeah, you're not covering this up. Yeah, this is where the magic happens right here, right? They paid way too much money <laughs> to have Stallone in the movie to cover his face up. Right, exactly. Way we, too much money. Do you think we needed to see more than the bottom half of his face, though? I mean, legitimately, we knew who it was. Well, everybody knows. Yeah, that's probably the most it. recognizable part of Stallone is as soon as he yells for the first time, you go, oh, it's Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when half of his mouth doesn't come up with the rest of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's Jeez. that's where we're going. We're making fun of... Uh, I'm not making fun of it. I'm saying it's an iconic look that only Stallone can pull off. That's that's high praise. That's not making fun. And everybody else who had Bell's palsy. Yeah. We right. love you. We love you so much. Godspeed on your Please journey. don't write us letters. But if you want to write letters to the show and you want to give us some don't feedback, please email the show at this show is trash at gmail.com. We would love to hear from That's you, please. A perfect place to put that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get into it, guys, we've we've covered a lot of movies where there was like it was clear that the behind the scenes drama, creatively or otherwise, made the movie kind of a mess. And this movie had tons of that as well. The reason the thing is such a hodgepodge of like, what kind of movie is this? Apparently, Danny Cannon came in ready to make a dark, gritty yep. drama. And Stallone was like, no, we need more comic relief. And wanted to make a lighthearted, and he wanted to take the mask off and all this other stuff. And it was Stallone mm -hmm. that hired Rob Schneider yep. to come lighten the movie up. And what Bail. they... Yeah, and what you end up with is like what neither of them wanted, and so it's somewhere in the like a garbled mess in the middle. Thank you, Stallone. Yeah, so I used to think that it was because of Rob Schneider that this movie sucked, but Stallone it was Stallone's fault. Yeah, I, I don't want to bag on Rob Schneider. No, I mean, okay. no, no, no. I, I really like the guy. I really, really do. I mean, if you <laughs> if if you get hired on and say, hey, hey, Rob Schneider, come on, do a movie, you're gonna get Rob Schneider. Yeah. I mean, unless the director. Gives him, you know, the, the different role and really, really, you know, gets him the, to to go outside of his his normal. You're getting Rob Schneider. I'm real. I'm still waiting for Rob Schneider's first turn at an Oscar. You know, 
his first dramatic turn, the, the Truman Show for Rob Schneider. Yes. Right? And it's it's going to happen one of these days. No, but you're absolutely right. Rob Schneider was Rob Schneider. It's not his fault. It's how he was born. Yeah. His mother loves him. That's just how he is. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> but Stallone, I don't know if this was because he was coming off Demolition Man like two years earlier, which was fantastic. kind of threaded that needle successfully of like funny and action driven. And he's like, oh, this is what we got to do. We got to do this. But that not in Judge Dredd. He knew the recipe. But Demolition Man That's was a, a new property. Imagine how hard. Okay, so you guys have made movies before. Dramic book. And imagine if you went in to make a film, right? You had the script crafted, but the star of your movie is just like, nah, fam, we're going to make this kind of movie. I mean, how frustrating would that be? Yeah, I, I can't fathom. You know, don't you work for me at that point? <laughs> right. You know, like legitimately, you're the talent to do this role. Now, granted, your input is always, you know, welcome, but you don't get to dictate, I wouldn't think. But, hey, you know, he's no. making all the money. He is, and that's, I mean, what do you think they paid Stallone versus how much you think Danny Cannon got, right? So who's really in charge? And yeah. I think Danny learned the hard way that in 1994, when they would have shot this, it wasn't Danny Cannon. Stallone called the shots. and He was so new to do it. Oh, yeah. He didn't know how to push back. He didn't know how to stay his ground. I mean, right. he was just starstruck. Which might have been why he, I mean, he might have just been hired to be a yes man, right? Possibly. I mean, we don't know. Now, this is all speculation because we weren't there, but Stallone, Stallone is not going to cave for some first time director. He's going to, he's going to get what he wants. He's Sylvester Stallone. This is, this is coming from a sly fan. You can't, you can't do that and expect the, the end product to come out well. No, you might as well, he might as well have just directed the movie himself. Right, it written himself because his 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 more successful films have been written and directed by himself. And Danny said after this that he would never again work with such a self absorbed actor. So Stallone apparently not a peach to I, work with. I think he just wrote off every big actor. Like he doesn't work with doesn't want to work with any right. like a list star. Anymore. Which is why he did a movie with Ray Liotta. Yeah, look where wow. that got him. <laughs> <laughs> Look where that got his career. Ooh. Ooh. I'm I'm sorry, Ray. Ooh. We love you, buddy. So let's 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 dive into this. So the, the movie itself is set in the future? Dystopian future. That's usually the it was okay. set in the future. Yeah. But it's how does it at it's the same time times now we've got flying motorcycles. Well, they're drone thingies. How does how is it set in the future and yet at the same time look incredibly dated? Right. Well, it was the future from the timeline of 1980s. I mean, we didn't know what the future was going to look like. I'm, I'm watching this movie, and they've got the like CRT the old TVs everywhere. The CRTV in the bike. <laughs> like, how'd that thing ever fly with one of those things in it? The director also was a big fan of Blade Runner. Yes. And I think they took a lot of notes off of Blade Runner. And where did they, didn't they shoot it? They shot in England. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where they shot Blade Runner as yep. well. And I think they used a lot of the same, the set set designers, costume designers, a lot of those guys were not only influenced by Blade Runner, but worked on Blade Runner as well. So I think that's where you're getting. Yeah. And they got so weird. close to the Blade Runner quality, didn't they? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> the effects weren't weren't the reason this movie wasn't any good. I mean, yeah, they're dated. It's 1995. It had oh, no. more to do with. The, the creative differences, I think, between the actor and the director. But the some of the some of the production design and this futuristic stuff I didn't like. I mean, I thought the bikes were fat and obnoxious. I don't know what you what did you you being a car guy, what'd you think of the bikes? Well imagine, you know, the technology that it would require to levitate a CRT screen. <laughs> I mean, it would be those things were obnoxiously heavy at any kind of size. So right. yeah, you would need like a ton of motor. To be able to do something like that. And they always malfunctioned. Absolutely. <laughs> they were pieces Yours, of junk. If you can they get were. it to work. That was his best joke in the whole movie right there. That was the, the his, best no, His joke. best. It was his. That's his best joke in the whole That was movie. the best joke in what? the whole movie. That was just fantastic because it was so under. It was his only joke in the movie. Right. It was, But it was so like <laughs> timed and right there and in the moment. That was good. I like it. That was his best joke in the whole movie. Funniest part. That's the fattest bike I've ever seen though. Well, there was one with a uh, Viper engine in it, V10. It's got four wheels right next to each other. Still looks oh like a gosh. motorcycle. It's a pretty fat motorcycle. 
What's those? Know. What are those gold motorcycles I see old guys driving down the street sometimes? Well, there's the Honda Goldwing. That thing is there. Strategic. You go. I mean, we call it the Winnebago. <laughs> couldn't couldn't they have just had Dread driving a Goldwing around? I think that's pretty much what they started with. They <laughs> modified a Goldwing, and that's where they got that. Here's another p- piece of technology from the movie that I thought was totally and completely unrealistic. Was you know the Lawgiver Two, right? Yeah. yeah. The, yep. the voice recognition software in that thing. Yep. You know how advanced the voice recognition had to be in that gun to understand what Sylvester Stallone was saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, that is the most unrealistic part of the thing. Four loaded, rapid fire. Yeah. Rapid fire. Right. And the gun knows. <laughs> Double whammy. <laughs> Armor piercing. Right. <laughs> like, wait, what? Well, the other 12 takes that they had, you know, for the voice recognition, you know, that, that thing was calling 911 because they thought he was having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I think you're having a stroke. Relax. Ooh, Emergency ooh. services are on the way. <laughs> Double whammy. I mean, I can't get Google to understand what I'm saying now in 2021. And that gun can read through Sylvester Stallone's so, garbled. So that's how we know it's in the future. Even in the future, that's not going to happen. That's why I don't I don't buy it. So let's get into the movie, guys. The movie starts off with I mean, apparently James Earl Jones needed a beach house or something because he cashed a check on this movie and starts off with an opening voiceover from James Earl Jones. And then we never hear from him again. 10 minutes of work for how much do you think James Earl Jones got for that? A buck two ninety five. At least they at least bought him a hand sandwich and gave him a couple bucks and he's out the door. And we start off with the first street riot of about, I don't know what all of 16 them. riots that are in this movie. It seems like, it was a mostly peaceful protest in the beginning of the movie, I feel like. I mean, they, they did not need to show up and just start shooting people. They were already shooting each other. Yeah. Well, they, they would did. have taken care of itself. They did ask them to stop. I mean, that is the thing, though, with that. They come in and legitimately, all right, we've got these two neighboring blocks that are killing each other. So our solution is to send in a guy to kill everybody so that they stop killing each other. That was the solution. Logistics. I mean, uh, he perfect. Did, he yeah. did say drop your weapons. Oh, yes, he did. Let's not forget that little tad bit of information. That was before he said. Before he wasted it. I am. The- yeah. Drop your weapons. <laughs> you are all under arrest. Why can't they shoot him while he's standing in the street? I mean, these bullets don't go 200 feet. Is that he what we're that, supposed yeah. to be? Yeah, right. No, they actually said that. And what happened? Point. Everyone shot at him. Okay. <laughs> I gave you a warning. <laughs> Put down your weapons. He did. Okay. But but why why do those bullets not shoot like from the third floor to the street? I don't understand. You would think gravity would keep them going. <laughs> right. Even if they weren't <laughs> able to travel 200 meters, you would think they would still go down pretty right. well. Falling bullet damage. Right. It should have at least. got to be something. It should be hurt. Been damaged by falling bullets. Well, that's why he has such large shoulder pads and helmet. Because all of his damage just <laughs> comes from above. A helmet I get. What is the point of the shoulder pads? Those are not providing any. Can protection. we talk about? Can we talk fantastic. about the outfit? Yes. How yeah. Please. Inaccurate. The outfit is. He has shoulder, like Joe just said. He has shoulder pads on. Yeah. With a giant gold eagle on one side and a bunch of feathers on one side, a yeah. chain that goes down to his badge and a helmet and a cod piece. That is it. And boots. And boots. Oh, and a leotard <laughs> underneath all that. Is that a bulletproof leotard? It's definitely not a bulletproof leotard. That is still way more armor than Hulk Hogan had, however. In Suburban Commando? In Suburban Commando. Sure? I think it's less armor. Okay, but look. No, he at least had, you know, a layer of leotard has got to be more than bare corrected. skin. Stand corrected. Do we ever see a judge break out in more than a brisk walk? I mean, if you ever have to chase a suspect wearing all that stuff, you're you're there's no way. No. Why are they wearing all that? Honestly, I, I, it, it was the it looks interpretation good. from the comic. Ask, right. that's, uh, that's really ask the creators. That's a good, that's a good question a for the writers and creators of Judge Dredd or 2000 AD is the comic book. When you've got a coked out James Remar, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you've got to chase him down. Now, now, Stallone's lucky that he didn't take off running because he's wearing 400 pounds of gear. There's no way he catches him. He should have just ran away. I mean, he would have been out of breath. He would have been halfway down the hallway going, stop, please stop. And he would have just got away, but he just... Everybody just stands there and lets Judge Dredd judge them. You're gonna, you, they were afraid of Judge Dredd as soon as they saw it was oh, Judge yeah. Dredd. I mean, that's once they read the script. They were like, <laughs> the, "It's Judge Dredd, man." The yeah, script said to stand on X. I mean, that's there my was spot. there was like one person that was scared, but it was mostly played for laughs. I mean, they all kind of laughed him off and kept shooting, and no one was like 
really stopping what they were doing when he showed up. No, that's true. They there was still like the this movie. That's what another thing that this movie got wrong was they didn't instill fear into the criminals like yeah. the 2012 version. Like yeah, Dredd showed up. Like people were terrible yeah <laughs> well that's why that's why i think that ultimately worked a little bit better than yeah. this one and he never took his helmet off there was one person in that first scene that thought judge dread was awesome and that was the rookie judge oh yeah, oh, yeah. who when when stallone shoots a wall he's like good shot sir yep <laughs> <laughs> he just shot the wall from like he goes next one's mine. the room <laughs> right. and he just gets blasted yeah, that was yeah. like, that guy was the red shirt from a Star Trek episode. <laughs> <laughs> Classic right. rookie Father. mistake. I mean, there's just, as soon as he jumped off the bike with Diane Lane and they're, you know, you knew. hiding. Why are you, you guys hiding? It? <laughs> Can we talk about Di- Diane Lane in that outfit? It, specifically just her outfit or her? She was gorgeous. She looked great, but but she had, she was, she should not have been in this movie. Boy. Diane Lane should not have been slumming it in Judge Dredd. She was way too good for this movie. She made the movie that much better. But except she didn't. She was horribly miscast. She was terrible in this. Yeah, yeah. And she's a good actress, so it's not... She you did know. good with what she had to do. Oh, my gosh. Well, Diane Lane, I think, showed up to set thinking it was a different movie. Probably. She probably got one she, version of the script. I think she, she thought it was the, a... The first version, where yeah, it was supposed to be all dark. Right. Annie Cannon's version. Then she yeah. got there and got the Stallone treatment. Like, oh, this is the movie we're doing. Shit. Maybe she didn't read it. She just looked at the script and thought it was a courtroom drama. <laughs> <laughs> felt like an order. It felt like an episode of Law and Order. Right. She's like, oh, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll definitely do this. But, you know, within the first scene, Stallone is blowing guys away with these dumb Pac-Man sound effects on his gun and, I mean, all these little, like, things they added that just made it cheesy and not good. And, I, you know, like when he does the double whammy, double whammy, and it's like, Pew, like it shoots these guys, but it makes like this like eighties video game sound effect coming yes, out of this it, gun. Yeah. It's that kind of stuff that takes the tone of the movie and establishes right kind of right right away. Oh, I, I shouldn't take this seriously, which is the opposite of what you'd want. But if, Judge Dredd. when you first see the poster at the movie theater, you should not take this movie seriously. <laughs> well, yeah. but if you're a fan of the comic, the comic is very serious. Yeah, but to comic book fans, I always actually know what they want out of their comic book movies. I think they know, they at least want it to be ac- to be accurate to the source material somewhat. I mean, every movie has to take a little bit of license in order to make the film, right? True. But I feel like for the most part, they want it to at least resemble. I feel like this doesn't even resemble. No, you're absolutely right. The yeah, you were gonna say something, Joe. It was a 1990s summer blockbuster yeah. movie. I mean, that's that's what they were going for, right? Um, uh, how old were you guys? 1995? Uh, would have been a seven. 15 for me. Yeah, I would have been 16. Uh, you have to go back. I mean, yeah. we're looking at it in our 40s here. Right. You know, it, we have to start looking at it as we were 15 years old when it, when it first came out. Yeah. And at well, the our, time. Our dads were I 40. love the movie. I never seen the comic. So I took right. this movie as, you know, with face value. Yeah. Oh, and no. That was, that was the best part about it. If, mm-hmm. if I would have read the comic, it would have been a heaping pile of trash. Right. Similar to your tracksuit. But other than... <laughs> dare you, sir. <laughs> Shots <laughs> fired. Shots are fired. <laughs> but... Uh, what was prepared to be judged? <laughs> but uh, for what it was worth, I somewhat enjoyed it in 1995. I enjoy it, too. I think, I think I've... I'm being too negative. I, I do like this movie. I watched it for this for this episode, and I'm like, yeah, this is not what they should have made, but this is an enjoyable movie in its own right. Yeah, I I enjoyed it when I saw it in '95. I enjoyed it twice last week. It was a good movie. It's yeah. watchable. It's not. It's watchable. You know, it's absolutely I think watchable. That's oh, what this is, 100. percent And I'll watch it again. This isn't the last time I'm ever going to watch no. Judge Dredd. For what it is, if you can put a movie on and and know, especially upon repeat viewings, you know exactly what it is. You can enjoy it for what it is and not sit there and go, I wish it was this, then then you're not going to like it if that's how you, the right. lens you view it through. So I agree. But in, in all consideration, I mean, I think my, my statement of you have to take it as face value from when the movie came out. Yeah. I mean, any of these movies that we've been doing on this podcast, <laughs> yeah. you know, that we can actually give them credit, a lot more credit for. Legitimately, we look at movies now, the uh, production value, everything in the movies now is just, better so you base everything off of what's current and how yeah. it's going right yeah. all the movies are faster paced we have you know other things distracting us in the background when we're re-watching this stuff and we don't give it the full attention like we would have legitimately right. the tv was the center of the room in the 80s and 90s when yeah. we were watching these movies That's and true. now the tv is also there while the center of your room is your phone right and or, you also didn't realize i'm sorry 
my apologies. You also didn't have access to your the internet, and you didn't. You, people know off the. They already know how this new comic book movies are going to be. How they're going to yeah. start middle, beginning, and end before the movie even comes out. No, the only thing you saw of this movie before it came out was the trailer. Yes, the trailer. Yep. Sorry, or and, Siskel and Ebert. Right. <laughs> And the trailer back then, it was like not even how they do trailers now, right? It was the, you had the voiceover guy, in a world, right? I mean that. Yeah, in a world. I think I remember from the trailer, it was like, this summer, Sylvester Stallone is Judge Dredd, right? Like, they don't do that stuff in trailers anymore. No, 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 no. You get like five, you get like 15 trailers and they're all like five minutes a piece. And I will say. Same guy doing the same <laughs> voiceover every single time. Yeah, the market dropped right out of the bottom of that. I hope that guy saved his money. <laughs> Oh, I'm right? sure did. Because still, I just heard his voice. Uh, I don't even know if it's still alive as the same guy or if it's a different type of guy, but oh. I heard that voice again in a B-rated movie trailer. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad he's getting some work. So uh, let's get back into it. There's this incredible map of the country that we catch a glimpse of towards the beginning where it's kind of zooming in on Mega City, which <laughs> is essentially New York area, what? New Jersey, all of that, right? But before we get there, there's another big city called texas city <laughs> down south if mega city in new york is like that, what do you guys think texas city is like in well, judge dread world it, it's the same thing but it's like cowboy hat judge helmets instead of <laughs> <laughs> oh god instead of armor they had saddles under shirt. <laughs> they, instead they, of those big blocky boots like they yeah. had in this one they're more pointed toe with a high heel uh, right got it yeah. and they're flying Fat mechanical horses exactly, around. Exactly, exactly. And I feel that's riding bolt. Yeah, and their spurs shoot that's rockets. Right. And, they, and they and the judges ride around saying, "I am law." Woo! <laughs> Voice recognition lasso. <laughs> Voice recognition. The lasso. A lasso shoots out of their lawmaker. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to see a follow up movie where it's set in Texas City. I don't even think you can make those movies anymore. Yeah, well, it's be Chuck Norris sad. instead of. Stallone. <laughs> Didn't they? Did I go too far? Is that really the whole room just died? No. No. Was, no. no. <laughs> Didn't they? They tried to get um, Arnold Schwarzenegger for the, to play this role. And every other movie in the 80s and well, 90s. I know. <laughs> that was their first Arnold choice. Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. is not the damn answer for every action movie. Give me an 80s movie. 80s movie. Yeah. Every 80s movie is a, was just, a Schwarzenegger just, movie. Just give me an 80s movie. Top Gun? Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> it would have been, been, been it would have been better yeah could you imagine <laughs> give me another one they got a big bubble on the canopy of the plane just <laughs> no. so he fits i goose. feel the need i feel goose. the need for speed no. let's go goose is plane. let's go fast now rips off the wing of the jet and just harpoons it into the Russians. we would we would have got <laughs> we would have got you fired like <laughs> 10 <laughs> 10 years earlier than we did okay so that would have been Every movie is better with Arnold. How would you Schwartz? like to yeah. have been Arnold Schwarzenegger? Take a quick DV, like whatever the hell I'm trying to oh, say. Oh, we're, already, tour, off, we're yeah. already off. We're already off the road. <laughs> Isn't it like how would you like to be Schwarzenegger in the '80s, knowing that everybody wants you to make all these bad movies? Oh God, 47 scripts a day showed up at his front doorstep. I'm I love guessing. Schwarzenegger. But I'm just like, really? Do you think I he's think, the answer for all these uh, movies? Means, and they looked I, at Kindergarten Cop and said, "Oh yeah, listen, <laughs> that's yes, the one." He bad class every single one. Goes, God, he had do this. He had the Midas touch for about 15 years. That, like, no matter what stupid concept, yes. he's a cop who's a kindergarten teacher. He's twins with Danny DeVito. He's uh, going to Mars to, like, you know, whatever. It was like to it didn't matter air. how dumb, how d yeah, to fight air? to fight the atmosphere. Yep. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Only swords that I can fight. No matter how dumb win. he fought the future in a movie in one. <laughs> uh, no matter how dumb the concept was, it would make 200, 300, 400 million yeah. dollars. So, of course, everybody wanted him to be in their stupid movie. I felt bad for his paper shredder. <laughs> just all those scripts that came in. <laughs> that just got jammed. Uh, why is no. this thing not, ja why is this thing not right. shredded? It's jammed. It's jammed. Stupid machine. I need more movies. I need to make Give more me more movies. <laughs> more movies now. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to save the that for down. later. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But how about how about a how about a Judge Dredd movie set in Texas City starring Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. Oh God, that's, that's right. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, all right. <laughs> all right welcome back. back so welcome back to Judge Dredd. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So apropos of nothing, it totally out of context and out of nowhere, we suddenly are in a prison with two people we've never seen, and this guy Rico is breaking out of Wait, prison. Wait, hold on. What? Uh oh. Eat recycled food 
It's good. It's for good the for the environment and okay for you. We're, we're totally. <laughs> s- there, I mean, there was some background humor, absolutely comic book esque, in the background going by. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. Too. Commit suicide, jump forty floors. I would have been suicide, maybe, but it's legal. No, but you know, right. I hadn't forgotten about that. That was actually one of my top five quotes. I love that line. That Damn that it. one's. I've ruined it. Oh no no you you know I don't bring it up anytime you want. I think that line is hilarious and on multiple levels. I, yeah. To me, it's like how that how that environmentally conscious stuff is marketed. Right. You know, right? Is like we care more about the planet than we do about you. So eat recycled food. It's good for the planet and okay for you. It's right. Yeah. Okay for you. Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. I think that that was that was fantastic. But and there's please, a few. But please moments. jump out the window to save us some paperwork. Right. Because it would be legal. Yeah. Because it's legal. Yeah. So we get this Rico guy now breaking out of prison. So it's our first introduction to. Armand Asante as Rico. I think he was by far the most excited person to be in this movie. Yeah, absolutely. He was the guy who started the yelling. <laughs> oh, yep, he did. He he started yelling, and then everybody started yelling more and more and more. And that's that's <laughs> he excelled the it. movie was. To use some easy math, let's say he had a hundred lines of dialogue. Eighty-five of them were yelled. Yes. <laughs> Higher. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm 107. Just gonna, <laughs> 107. How many out lines? Of 100 did he have? lines. No, I don't know. I'm just I'm just what saying. Was the name? What was the number you gave? A hundred. Arbitrarily, I said a hundred oh, lines. Yeah. So 107 lines. 107. Yeah. yeah out of a hundred. Yeah, out of a hundred. He was constantly screaming. He was so amped up. Loved it. It's like it's like he was reading Judge Dredd comics since he was a little boy in Armando Santi's mama's house, and what he got was, a chance to be in this movie. What year was movie. this? This was 1995. 95. It's a little late, but I mean, I'm still thinking Coke was everywhere on this movie. So. <laughs> what? No, look, man. 94 when. When Van Damme made Street Fighter, he spent that entire movie coked out of his yeah, mind. So yeah. I mean, this stuff was everywhere. It was it wasn't the eighties, but I'm sure you know you could still get your hands on it in Hollywood if you wanted some. I I don't know. I feel like the guy most likely to have been on drugs when he made this movie was James Remar. That uh, you know the thug that got killed in that first scene, given sure. the death sentence. Uh, the guy from the Warriors. I yes. we should do the Warriors sometimes. And James Remar is awesome. Love that guy. But anyway, Armando Santi. I I. All joking aside, I thought he was great in this movie. He absolutely. Love the role. Yeah. He's sweating an awful lot everywhere, though. Yeah, why is he? Gl- he's like glistening with sweat in every single scene. Maybe he was on drugs. That's what I'm saying. He's got oily skin. He's got a skin condition? He's got kind of skin condition. Yeah. It could be yeah. very serious, guys. You and, it, and, it's the, and it's only cured by massive amounts of cocaine. And pre-workout. <laughs> this guy's going to hate us. I have to take this. It's for my skin condition. <laughs> So then he shoots this guy in the neck and breaks out, which is ingenious because it was voice recognition that controlled everything, right? So very smart. But this is established early in this movie that Rico pretty much just kills everyone he meets. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. Everyone. That was that a thing for bad guys in nineties movies that we have to like establish that they're so bad and so horrible that I feel like back then a lot of these bad guys in these action movies just killed every person they talked to. Well, look at the... Look, it's better than having to announce that you're a bad guy or a good guy. We knew. I guess. No, I was saying you're absolutely right because it's just like you, to establish, you had to establish the villain. Just look, look, at, look at Simon Phoenix, like how many cops and guys he killed in Demolition Man. Same with this movie. How many you know, people Arma Hassan just blasted within the first... Like in the first four scenes he's in, he's killed... Well, that's what I'm saying. People. He even kills the shop owner yeah. who was a good dude. Yeah. He, he even tries, so he goes in to fetch what we find out later is the judge gear. And this guy is like, don't touch that. Don't touch that. You're, you're going to hurt yourself. He like tries to save him from hurting himself. It's, yeah. You know, you're going to lose your arm. You pick that up. And then he just picks it up and just shoots him in the face. Mm. Well, it's potentially because he didn't have the money to buy the ABC warrior robot. So, I mean, he was going to have to steal from this dude anyway to get what he wanted. That guy wasn't selling stuff. That was like a museum shop or something. Why is it called an ABC robot, Joe? Is that ever said? No, uh, well, that's actually from earlier comics. You it can was actually a different go back. Comic. It was ABC Warriors yep. or something like that yeah. was the name of it. Oh, it this was, was a crossover? It was, a, yeah. it was actually a crossover. It was, oh. it, the ABC Warrior did not appear in Judge Dredd comics. It was simply, I think they just thought it was cool. They're like, hey, we'll just bring it in. Well, it's definitely cool. It's one of the coolest oh, yeah. parts of the movie is this robot. Yeah. I wish I wish that the computer gra- uh, 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 CG was better at the time. Because yeah. just imagine that dude with, with better graphics. I, I mean, the, the puppetry was great. But, yeah. I mean, 
You talking about more digital visual enhancements? Uh, just like, to see a full body I shot and him really uh, tearing through things. Yeah, right, because he pretty much moves neat. from the waist up. Yeah, that's yeah, all like, it was. And again, that right. would have been cool and all, but I really, truly, from a, a guy who builds stuff, you know, no, perspective, I, I, yeah. I love the fact that that thing is made. It, yeah. you know, it existed. It's somewhere, and I want to buy it. I don't have the money, <laughs> but I want that. Yeah, you have the money. I love practical effects, and whenever possible, if you can make something practically, I think even subconsciously in our brains, we can tell when it's real and when it's not, and it in, it helps with the immersion. But you also, there's a sacrifice for that, right, where it can't do as much, like you're saying, Joe. Yeah, and it was a huge puppet. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was to scale. Yeah. And I think maybe that was part of the problem, where it was so large, so cumbersome, yeah. to be able to get that thing to to move in a believable fashion i mean i did go on the internet though everybody you can buy your own copy of it at like 13 inches if you want it's out there oh they have them oh yeah you can buy them they're cool does it come with a little cart that wheels it around anytime (laughs) because anytime that thing was moving it was getting wheeled on a cart it was (laughs) you could tell yeah i totally forgot that thing was getting wheeled around in a cart like a baby it was oh my god but it also, but it still, it still was effective, even though it was clearly not moving from the waist down. Yeah. It was still effective and intimidating and. It had I, the best kill. Actually. In the movie. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah. It did. But oh, actually, yeah. as you were saying, uh, when we were watching this, James and I actually rewatched this uh, next to each other and we're talking about it and this is going far into the future of the movie from where we're talking. Like legitimately, he's like, hey, why does he run over by the robot and then say, hey, is that? Well, obviously it's because the robot couldn't run to him and grab him. He had to run <laughs> right in front of the robot. Right, right. Oh, you're talking about Jurgens. Yes. And you The same kill you're talking about, yep. right? Yep. We can jump forward. This, this very angry German judge who is so intense, every time he speaks to anyone, whether he's willing or not, yelling or not, his face is like vibrating. This is one of the problems. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yes, yeah, slightly off subject. This is one of the problems I had with the movie. You knew he was the bad guy. Oh, sure. Like immediately seconds in. You're like, before we're supposed to know that's the guy. Oh yeah. He had a bad guy face. He did. He did. He's angry. <laughs> Bruce Willis. <laughs> threw his, Bruce Willis, I love the guy again. But he speaks with a German accent. Bruce, Bruce Willis threw his cousin things. off the 32nd so. like floor of Nakatomi <laughs> Tower down in LA 45 years earlier. Of course he's pissed. <laughs> so you're saying that <laughs> because he had a German accent, and he had a bad guy face, and he looked like a diehard villain. That's how we knew. Yeah. It's it's, it's really easy nowadays. Uh, you're not like, wrong. He's typecasted. For us, we can all p- point out. It, you, you throw yes. an action movie or any type of movie in front of us, we can generally figure out within mere seconds next to the village idiot who right. the bad guy is. How, but okay. the movies where you can't tell who the actual bad guy is until the end, it's those very, are the amazing great. ones. Exactly. You're right, because exactly. they stump you. They stump you because we're all we all we're all movie gurus yeah. or we, something, you know. We love to sit there and predict the movie. Oh, I love, right. I love and then when it that. you're wrong, that's the best movie. I look. I watched that movie with my wife, and I get off topic. But I walk in the room two seconds. It's like one of those bad Lifetime movies. I go, yeah, that guy's a bad guy. She goes, no, she, right. nah, he loves her, you know. And then ten seconds, like two, an hour later, he's in he's in jail. I'm like, oh yeah, he's a, a bad guy. Right? How did you know that? But that was it, though. That's one of those little small micro things. Yep. That just plagued this movie. Joe hates Germans. Oh, whoa! <laughs> so Judge Dredd starts teaching at the academy, and. Let me tell you, what a treat for the students there. What a treat. This dude is the biggest Debbie Downer. Diane Lane even walks up to him in the locker room to try and have a conversation. And like, I have a life. I have, you know, things I like to do. I have friends. And 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 Dredd is just like, you only have a life because you haven't, you've only been on the streets a year. Wait another year and your life will be over. I'm like, this dude sucks. He's like not somebody you want to be friends with. No, He's yeah. not a recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely not recruiting well. No. But every single one of those young cadets absolutely idolizes Judge Dredd, and they want oh, yeah. to be miserable just like him. He loves his job, though. Absolutely. And I've never seen anyone be so gleefully happy to blow up a yuppie's car than Dredd. <laughs> Could I you remember, imagine how fun scene. that would be? Are you serious? Yeah. I would be ecstatic to be able to do that. The only thing that stops me from doing that is going to jail. <laughs> it it. It's an odd scene, yeah. In essentially, it's his fourth offense, and yep. so apparently, your fourth offense, you get your car blown up. Yeah. Well, towing I mean, if, is if for a first offense. I mean, if you don't listen the first four times, I mean, yeah. It seems like an excessive penalty. Yeah. If you, 
Not All only. you have to do is listen the first four times. You could have avoided your car being destroyed. But here's the thing. We don't know how that law book was written. That's right. true. The thing is, not only did he not just blow the car up, but he blew the car up on a busy <laughs> right. roadway. Yes, he did. That's what I'm Tons saying. Tons of pedestrians yes, around. <laughs> It was, a mean, control, it was a control explosion, Joe. No. No, it wasn't, though. <laughs> <laughs> the flames shot up yeah. that loud. <laughs> right, because of Dredd's expert marksmanship. marksmanship yeah. yes. right. that he shot. controlled the explosion. The trauma that the orphanage had that was across the street. <laughs> they use airbags, Joe, for the special yes. effects, okay? Bob, what about the children hit by shrapnel when he blew up that guy's car? You know what? Those, it was fiberglass. You should not be in the vicinity shrapnel. of Judge Dredd. Oh, fine. And you're breaking the law if we're within 300 feet. <laughs> yeah, you're breaking. Of Judge the, yeah, you're breaking the law if you're in 300 feet of Judge Dredd. It's all collateral damage at that yeah, point. Yeah, it's it's you're it's you snooze you lose. So anytime he's walking around anywhere, we should just see people running away from him. Have a absolutely, yep, in all absolutely. directions. There should be a Judge Dredd alarm on your smartphone. <laughs> yes, that goes off. Proximity alarm. Wait, proximity <laughs> Judge Dredd alarm. It's like, oh crap! Get the <laughs> It's like when you see a shark. Which going way? Which the way? Water. Yeah. It's like a shark <laughs> tracker when they track jaws. Except it's not buoys. It's on your phone. It's an alarm system. It's yeah. good. Well, then we got the guys, the guards show up, and we actually start off getting into the actual plot of the movie. What is the right? plot of the movie? That, that dread, the, the dread, yeah, has been accused of a crime, and this kind of starts the whole thing in motion that's going to take us through to the end, right? And so the guards show up, and they say, you know, you're under arrest. But my question is, why doesn't dread get judged on the spot like everybody else? That is a good question. Well, because he, he's not he's being awarded a full tribunal, judged by a judge. He's just being brought in. What are right? those? What are those tribunals? tribunals? I don't know. I I, I never I they never established cool what those though. troopers were. They literally no. just showed up. Judge Joseph Dredd. You're That's like, internal affairs. That's internal. It's yeah. IA. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But then we get this incredible tribunal scene, right? Where why was there four people on the tribunal, and then when they did a tribunal council at the end, there was two of them talking about it? I mean, they miss. is it just like a law of averages? So we have four on the bench, but only two talk, and then it, that makes it a tribunal. Shouldn't there have been a three somewhere in that? Shouldn't there have been an odd number just in general to break a tie? Yeah, you would think so. Not that there was going to be a tie in this matter. The evidence against Judge Dredd was pretty stacked. Yeah. But he had Diane Lane defending him. This is, you know, this is a perfect example of what I thought, why I thought she was miscast. She was so weak in her response to the judge at the end when she turned around. This this whole court has been a farce, right? And it was like it, it just was like a little. Is a three year old throwing a temper? Exactly. That was it just her. yeah. No power behind what she was saying, and it was just she's great in certain roles in certain movies. I just felt like miscast in this. The the main actress that really stood out in that whole thing was Judge Judy. <laughs> she <laughs> nailed it. I missed could that you, scene. Could you imagine if it panned out and there's like it goes past and here's the German angry judge and then here's Max <laughs> von Sydow here and then it's just Judy Judy Shyland. <laughs> Quick side note: so dis- despite Joe's feelings, we love Germans here. <laughs> so I'll throw that out there. Okay. Okay. What's great, the best part about this scene to me is that we are treated to the best line, and I don't mind stepping on the top five list here, that is in the entire movie. So DNA coded? Yes, Judge Magruder. It could not be otherwise. And what was the result of the computer check of the DNA coding on those bullets? The DNA is a perfect match for Judge Joseph Dredd. So- Ooh. The evidence is impossible. Relax. It's impossible. <laughs> I never broke the law. I am the law. <laughs> no case. You gotta believe me. Oh my gosh, that's the best part of the movie, right? That's what he got paid for. Right. That's why you get Stallone. This. Roll credits right after that scene. You know what? Don't roll credits because I actually like the. Uh, yeah. No. My favorite scene is the angel family <laughs> scene. Yes. <laughs> love <laughs> yeah so let's get into it because at this point you know they send him on the long walk or the the old judge takes his retirement as a way to make, spare the life spare of, the life of yep. dread and they all are off into the cursed earth where their plane gets shot down by a bunch of great Hill, actors Hill, the Hill greatest bunch of hillbilly cannibals to have ever graced the only way i can explain <laughs> the, that the is movie. that they left the city on their long walk or uh, towards the prison, and it goes directly towards 
Texas City. <laughs> and so, like, there's a little bit of crossover is that, of culture. Is that where you would go but, if you got exiled from Mega City? Would you walk to Texas City? No, I don't know. <laughs> I want to know, Clint, Clint, would you walk to Texas City? Absolutely. You'd never if, make if it. If there was no Paradise City <laughs> close by, then yes, absolutely. Texas City next. The thing I don't understand is why are they hillbillies? This is just outside New York. That's what they say. So I understand why they'd be like post-apocalyptic, like Raiders. But why are they like, oh, come on, pal. Let's get these, you know, we're going to eat them up. Okay. Well, obviously, there was no uh, uh, distinguishing uh, place for the prison. Yeah. It, it could have been south. It could have been. You don't know how long they were in transit. That's true. You know, well, there's so many things. We I do mean, know that it up. was that day of-ish. <laughs> And that oh, uh, yeah. the right. older judge had just started walking, so it was inside <laughs> yeah. of about five miles. It's not because yeah, he walked far. there. Yeah, I guess you're right, because then the judge, or, or uh, uh, um, what was that gentleman's name? Scott Wilson? Scott Wilson, right? The guy that played Pa? Is that no. what you're asking? No, no, no. 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 Uh, the, the old judge who retired. Max. Yes. Max. He showed up at the end and saved the day. Right. So obviously that's a... Right, so why, why do these guys sound walk? like they're from, you know... Appalachians. <laughs> well, I mean, just because it's a New York-ish looking city does not mean it wasn't Atlanta. No, I'm like, I know I'm picking nits here, but so I want to talk about Mean Machine. Uh, was it Christopher Edmondson? Okay, right? yeah, he's a British actor, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that, thought it, everyone thought it was Ron Perlman. It's like it's not Ron Perlman at all. No, not at all. <laughs> that was, in in my opinion, the best part about oh, this. Oh, I love that scene. Whole whole thing. Yeah, that. That design, that character, that everything. I have questions, though. Okay, what do you got? What does the dial do? It turns them up. In what way? In up. It, <laughs> it's it's like to 11. It's obviously. Exactly. I'm it saying. It used to be a How does that mechanism work? What in him is being turned up? Pre-workout, man. I've been yeah. saying it before. I'll say it now. It's pre-workout. Everyone's jacked up on Coke, pre-workout, and yeah. testosterone. <laughs> yep. Yep. That was all three out. of those. All three of those at the same time. Yep, they're just a little like uh, they had to make some alterations. You know, the uh, cursed earth is not kind to the youngins. No, I guess I like the concept, but is it just like an anger bar? He's just, just yeah. he's just cranking intensity. up his intent. That's, that's oh, it's the intensity. intensity. Yeah. Okay. Intensity. I thought he was awesome. Yeah. And and the design and the effects of I and maybe I should have looked at this beforehand as far as who did who did the costume and makeup design. I agree. Joe was was top notch. And that the, started the, me. That one character actually did plant start started that seed of where I've kind of gone now. That's like awesome. the ABC Warrior and that guy wow. really got so me thinking. You owe everything. No, no, to no, no. Judge Dread. I do not. But I'm just saying that got me into this into the little thing that I do now. So that's awesome. I tell you, that's that, awesome. That man. started it. Well, we got the old judge that shows up Saves to the day. save the day, but he gets impaled. Immediately by the dial by the what's his name again? Mean Machine. Mean Machine, and uh, and survives just long enough to deliver a long speech and the rest of the plot to Judge Dredd before he passes away. Convenient. Yeah, they do a lot of critical thinking and you know just like breaking down of what the possible situation could be and zero put pressure on the wound and try and survive <laughs> this life a little bit. I mean, right. that's pretty Triage amazing. was right out the window. Yeah, and why was he so happy to see him? He shows up, and I'm like, doesn't he still think he's guilty right. at this he point? He just did this thinking he was guilty. And he just shows up. He's like, oh, what's up, man? And then he gets killed immediately. I thought the fight between Stallone and Mean Machine was really well done, though. It was excellent. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, The kill-off line was great. Oh yeah, you can't have an action movie. In, you can't have an action movie in the '90s and not have a catchphrase right before you kill a dude. Could you? Could you find that clip and play it real quick? I I can't do it justice. I can't say it without butchering it. But it's you have the, to hear this. The amount of one-liners Stallone got in this movie the, was was pretty impressive. This is funny because I was just I watched both Dreads 2012 and '95. There are better one-liners in 95 than there are in the 2012. 100%. We have been critical of movies with too many one-liners in the past, but I think when you do a comic book movie in general, everything in the comic book is a line. Yeah. It's one line to get your point across. (laughs) How do you please? I knew you'd say that. I knew you'd say that. He knew he was going to say. 
<laughs> just shoves a giant cable right in his neck. <laughs> That's yeah. what they all say. Yeah. I, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I, that was such a dumb line. All the way me. through the it movie. It was great. Every time somebody <laughs> Don't does Don't deny something. it. It was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, through the whole movie. Anytime he yeah. says anything. Apparently, Judge Dredd's superpower is that he's a mind reader. Right. That's he knew true. He, he, is a mind he knows reader. exactly what's going to happen. Well, he's been genetically engineered. That's true. Do you I think mean, he's not. a descendant of Cobra? No, he was literally born in a test tube. Yeah. From Cobra's DNA yeah. from the 80s. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes your randomness is awesome, and sometimes it totally throws me off. Like, I don't <laughs> know ra- what I'm going to say. Just railroads. Just railroads. <laughs> it's like somewhere I'm like, <laughs> the frick do I even say to that? Um, <laughs> gee, I dread. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a quick break now here in the middle of the show to just let everybody know how much we appreciate the fact that you're listening. Thank you for joining us. We saw this last week that we were number 79 on iTunes in movie reviews, so I guess we're famous now, right? I mean, there's 78 people. People Um, recognize me when I go places. (laughs) That's for different reasons. (laughs) However, I only go to places I've been before. Oh, that's right. The people that see what I see, you're sexy. But that's because of you guys. So we appreciate that you've been listening. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, it really helps us out. If you leave us a five-star review, it helps us get seen or rather heard by more people. Uh, But really, wherever you find the podcast on Spotify or Google Podcasts or Amazon or anywhere, Leave us a review, share it with a friend, podcast live or die on word of mouth. So if you could tell somebody about it, that would be great. But more than anything, we're just happy that you are here listening to us ramble on and on about Judge Dredd. So we appreciate it. And if you'd like to reach out to the show or talk to us or give us some feedback or tell us we suck, hit the show up at Gmail, which is this show is trash at gmail.com or you can follow us on facebook facebook.com slash bad movies rule we're posting stuff most days on there and we'd love to interact with you on there as well so we appreciate you let's get back to talking about judge dread but f- but first what do we need to do to boost our numbers we need at least one more person to listen to the podcast one more <laughs> one more that will help yeah all right one more that's all our goal all right, so Dredd and his little buddy who's, what's it, Fergie, that's his name. Fergie is oh boy. trying to break back in to Mega City, and they have this brilliant idea to run through a flame pipe. A flame pipe, yeah. I have questions. Flame pipes. <laughs> no, no, no. The city's incinerator. No. no, no. I have it's, questions. It's, it's flame pipe. That's fine. That's It can be flame pipe. It's flame pipe. But they're running in yes. to the flame pipe that's coming out. They run for... 10 of their 30-second window that they've got. Rob Schneider falls down. Flame Judge pipe. Dredd comes back Flame and then picks him up by the scruff of his neck and starts carrying him off back in the same direction they were going, but yet the flame is not flame coming pipe. at them. It's coming from behind them. So yeah. the flame is actually coming from outside at this point <laughs> yeah. now and coming Flame back pipe. into the city. You do realize you need a Stallone run to make this scene work? You have to have a Stallone running from yeah. the fire explosion, but what he's saying is true. No, it's very the true. flame's coming from it's the coming wrong from direction. They should be running towards the it's flame and then shoot pipe. out that's, the thing on the bottom and then go straight down the grate. That is Stallone saying, I need into this the This is doors. Flame Pipe 101. If you ever designed a flame pipe, this is how they work. <laughs> I, I don't do. understand why you don't understand. Can't, can't grasp this. This is just maybe. This is Flame Pipe. We're just out of our depth here. From a, We just don't understand the engineering that goes into Flame exactly. Pipes. Exactly. Why they are a bunch of a, exist, why they even need to have flame pipes shooting out of the city, and B, what direction the flames go is all based on and which direction, direction you're, you're facing. Running. Yeah, I exactly. Suppose. Yeah, that makes, exactly. makes a lot of sense. Come on. They're breaking back into the city, and immediately, or not immediately, but pretty soon into it, they find some other judges, which Stallone is able to knock out by punching them directly in their helmet. Right. So yeah. what's the point of the helmet then? Well, the helmet is good for small impacts, but not from like something large like a fist. It only works with bullets. So it could stand up to bullets. Right. Because they're small. But not Stallone's fist. It's big. Is it just because it's Stallone? Oh, you think he has a magic fist? I think he's got a magic <laughs> fist. That's what I'm saying. It's called There's a like device. <laughs> if somebody else punched them, they would break their hand, but Stallone can knock you out through your judge's helmet. Right, that's what I'm saying. That seems legit. This guy punch started one of those bikes later on in he the did. movie. Right? So he has a magic well, fist. That is how you fix electronics in the eighties and nineties. You just slap them on the side real good once and spit hey, on it. Look, it works. Punch it. He said, punch it, and he hit him he hit it in the CRTV and the thing just started. Magic fist. 
See, we're finding all these superpowers that Dread had that we didn't know about. So he's got um, ESP. ESP. Power fist. And a power fist so far. Meanwhile, throughout the movie, okay, so I know we haven't spent much time on the B plot. We've been pretty much following Stallone because in between all these scenes, we're, we're kind of treated all the evil machinations that are happening behind the scenes with Rico and, and Joan Chen's character and the evil German judge. And the reason I haven't spent a lot of time on it is because it makes no, no sense. I don't, tube. I don't understand. Flame tube. Flame pipes. Where did, where did oh, Joan Jen come into play? What they're doing, what they're trying to accomplish. There's something about Giannis and this clone. It's clearly Janus. Janus, whatever. It's spelled Giannis. And... We say Janus, it's like anus with a J on the front of it. It's Jif. And I none of it makes any sense. Nor did not nor do I really care. Right? right. No. So But she was what doc not doctor, but she was the technician on the project, or she was like a, right. a psychologist who testified against or testified he was insane trying to keep him from dying. So whatever. Because she was in love with with Rico. I don't know if that was the case, but it ended up looking that way later. Regardless, she kind of takes his side because she's there kind of gleefully smiling when the German judge comes in. Uh, Jürgen Prochnow gets his arms and legs ripped off, and she's like totally chill with that. Wouldn't you be? I mean, what are you going to do? Like, hey, stop and get your arms and legs ripped off? No, I think you just like roll with it and like, yeah, this guy's crazy. <laughs> no, but you, you referenced this earlier. This is one of the stupidest scenes in the movie because he's standing right next to them. Uh, Jurgen is, and yes, when, when he realizes right he's going to gonna clone himself instead of clone himself using the worst DNA sample machine of all time, yeah, it's like yeah. sticks his arm and it just it sticks four needles all the way through, <laughs> leaks everywhere. Right. I mean, this thing doesn't even make a good skin tight seal. I mean, I know every time I've been stuck with a needle, right. the blood pretty much stays in my arm or in the needle. It doesn't squirt all over the place. Right, it's new. And so knowing now that he's going to clone himself, yeah. He's like, I have to stop you. And he pulls his gun and then make sure he walks 15 feet away before he turns around to point it at them right in front of the robot so that he can be within yes. grasp of, of the ABC Fantastic. warrior, right? Well, I think some of that is because, you know, if you've ever done any weapons training, you realize that, you know, it takes you longer to draw a gun and shoot somebody than it would for somebody to just grab a knife and cut you. So, like, potentially Rico mm -hmm. could have stopped him if he was within arm's reach. So he had Maybe to get farther was. away. Yeah. That must have been what Danny Cannon was thinking right. when he that, choreographed that scene. I think that's scene. truly it. Right. Not that the robot couldn't walk. He thought to himself, you know, this movie's really going south. This <laughs> is what we need. We need this to, kind of accuracy. To really here. bring this together. So they were <laughs> meticulous <laughs> about the science in this scene. Yeah. But flame tube. Yes. Flame, flame pipe. Tube. Flame pipe. It's just flame, flame pipe. pipe, so it doesn't just, matter. Yeah, stop saying flame tube. It's Come on. flame pipe. I got to bring this up now. To me, this is the elephant in the room here, okay? Rob when Schneider? It comes, I'm not that fat. <laughs> no, Rob Schneider's like the uh, the least of the problems at this point. Rico and Stallone are supposed to be brothers. Twins. Twins? Identical twins. Same they, DNA. 100% identical DNA. Would, they should look the same. Why they cast Armand? Asa I love how he performed. Don't get me wrong. But why are you casting him to be Stallone's... You twin. wouldn't. You don't have a big enough budget for two Stallones. Why didn't they just double impact it, like with two Van Dams? What if it would cost more money? Stallone had played the bad guy, which which he had never done at this point. Yeah, and Dread that could have been incredible, uh, or even more hilarious. I don't think Stallone's that. I don't know if he was to ready. Do a villain. Yeah, I don't know if he was ready to be a villain. I just think it's hilarious. It makes Stallone a Stallone was a villain in Death Race two thousand to start his career. Shut up. Okay, All but right. you know, no one saw Sorry. that. Yeah. The point I being, it. I did machine gun Joe. I got you, man. It makes <laughs> it makes for a hilarious line when Stallone walks into the room at the end, and Joan Chan's character goes, "He looks just like you." Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait Wait a second. Second. We need to sell it because <laughs> we know it nobody doesn't. nobody but, realizes that they're supposed to be identical twins yet. So just you know, yeah, right. Make sure you say how much they look like when he comes in, mm -hmm. and so poor Joan Chan has to do the heavy lifting here. To try and sell this. What thing. do you think Danny Cannon's like feelings were on this whole subject? Like they're supposed to be twins, and he's just like, "This is they're not twins." Close enough. Yeah. They're not. They're not at all. <laughs> he's like, "Good enough." Yeah. I don't understand why a lot of these productions just don't use a think a little bit outside the box. You know. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's say you know you can't have two Stallones, right? So you get another actor to play his brother. Why just why not just throw in like oh he has some facial deformities because of his when he was judged originally 
you know. Or do the looper aspect when you made Joseph Gordon-Levitt look like a younger Bruce Willis. Exactly. And he you know, did look like a younger Bruce Willis. Yeah, or just something else rather yeah. than just... A little bit more prosthetics, maybe? Yeah, just give it a or like extra. Or, like, cast a Italian guy, a stunt double that looked like... I mean, there are people out there that looks like Stallone. Yeah. yeah. And can probably... You could probably speak. remake this movie today and actually do that cool Marvel special effect where they... Make you look younger. Like you that need. movie where our Gemini, where Will Smith's fighting a younger version of himself. That, that was actually yeah, a that was a good, good movie. movie. That was he a good movie. Himself. Yeah, I think I think Armand plays it really well, and so that saves it from being horrible. No, but absolutely, he plays the role awesome. Aside from looking exactly like the judge, he's supposed to look exactly like. And we actually get a pretty emotional scene between the two of them, which was I thought like it existed in a different movie. I'm like, hold on. This yeah. isn't supposed to be in this movie. What are you guys doing? And he's clearly cares about Judge Dredd and wants him to pick to be on his side. Yeah. And his voice even breaks a little bit when he says, "You're the only family I ever had, or I'm the only family you ever had." Yeah. And uh, it was surprisingly emotional. But R- right before he threw him off the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> right? But Dredd warned him. He said, "Kill me!" Like four times. Yeah, did he, he did. He truly did. says, "Like don't miss." Kill me now. It's the only shot you've got. And right. Then he, then he called for single flare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. That was well, way too. Well, before we get to that. <laughs> that was way too what? He <laughs> says. Cl- crystal clear. It's single flare. Uh, single right. flare. <laughs> Court so, adjourned. Yeah. He has this signal flare because the gun is out of bullets. This magic magic gun right. is out of magic bullets that yep. transform into whatever you want. So apparently it's actually loaded with different ammunition in it. Uh-huh. So he calls for signal flare, shoots it at the wall, and as Rico is ready to got this guy like a fight for his life, yep. you know, back and forth, everything matters, 100%. Signal flare. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like rubber necks all the way around staring right. at this thing. For like two and seconds. he forgot that, hey, <laughs> I got Stallone hanging off the side of this thing. All I got to do is stomp on his feet, you know? I mean, <laughs> or stomp on his fingers. Yeah. yeah. No, he, he totally misses. Yeah, he turns around and stares at the flare for a good two and a half seconds. Well, he, he first he turns and looks at it. Yeah. Like, just turns his head and looks at it. Like, okay, oh. that's cool. And then he actually, like, squares his shoulders to the thing and turns <laughs> farther around so that Judge Dredd can get a solid hold on his collar right. and really throw him off the building well. But not until he Statue tells him that, that court's adjourned. Right? Yeah. He's got court's adjourned. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Dialed in. I'm sorry, and what was that again, James? Yeah. One more time? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the other hilarious thing about this is as soon as that's... Now, there's riots going on in the street, right? Because he's sowed right. all this unrest and judges are getting killed by the dozens. And we are then down over 100 judges at this point. Right. But as soon as this happens, he walks out the front door... And all the riots have stopped. Right. And it's sunshine. Every other judge. It looks like the sound of music. Every other judge is there in full dress uniform, polished up, shiny as can be. Right. Yeah. They don't need to be anywhere. There's nothing going on. I'm late for work. And off he rides into the He rides to the coolest, most badass cinematic score by Alan Silvestri. Yeah. The score of this movie was good. Yeah. No. Same guy that does the Avengers Yep, and he did Predator, uh, Back, to Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Yep. How did you get this guy to music your movie? To, to well, because like movie? like I'm saying, the movies that Stallone and Arnold were in were the yeah. big movies that yeah, summer. Were, so yeah. if yeah. you were a composer and you were like going to cash the big check, you're going to the big budget movie, and it's probably going to be a Stallone or a Schwarzenegger pick for about a period of 15 years. That's true. That's, that's what it was going to be. And this movie... This is why you have Stallone in this movie, okay? It had a $90 million budget. $90 million, which was a ton back then. And it grossed $140 million, okay? Now, it was panned by critics, and everyone was like, this movie is terrible. We're going to go see it anyway. But it made money because yeah. Stallone, Stallone was, in, was it. in it. This is why you put up with him, you know, coming in and changing things and doing everything. I mean, because people came to see bef- because of him. They did a new Dread movie, as we've talked about in 2012, right? The serious take on it. For half, less than half the budget, a $40 million budget, it made $41 million. Success. It broke even. I need a million dollars. Okay. Even though it was way better, it way, it made $100 million less than the Stallone one. Yeah. That's why you hired Sylvester Stallone in 95 to make this movie. So, so in your eyes, making a million dollars is a failure. It's, we are different people. 
This is that, that's that might that's, that's a million dollars not going to one person. That's right. a million dollars. That's gotta pay a lot of bills. Let's pay a lot of bills, man. <laughs> well, the, the budget paid the bills. It just shows you how much star power. No, that, that's matters. the whole that point doesn't of a include budget. that doesn't include the marketing, the the what yeah. what you're paying out, theaters are getting their cut of that stuff, right? I mean, that that is not making money. If you break even, you've lost, essentially. And I don't know. To me, if you got a budget and the budget says this is how much it costs, that should be how much it costs, and how much you make is how much you're making. The difference is profit. I that's, agree. With that's you. not right. To a Hollywood studio that's that that's, wants these oh, things. I know to they're make not going to billions make, of I dollars. I understand that that's not making big money, especially no, on the investment. To them, that's it's a tiny nothing. Percentage, but I'm just trying yeah. to be, you know, a million and, dollars. I'll take it. But but even when you compare it to the 95 movie, which is what we're doing, it's a hundred million less than that movie made, and right. it's a far better movie. It is. I mean. One of these movies has a 5.6 rating on IMDb, and the other one has a 7.1, and one of them made $100 million more than the other did because of Stallone at the peak of his powers at this point. Yeah. Now, it was pretty much over for Stallone after this. Right A year after this movie, he made Daylight, and then it was, ba- and then it was straight to Assassins. DVD for a while. They did Assassins. It was Assassins, it was Assassins that Assassins same right year. after this. Yeah. What and is then, Daylight? Exactly. And then he made Daylight, which was probably his last theatrical release for like, until driven. he did Balboa, until Driven, he did that really sh- that crappy race car movie. Oh, oh I yeah. forgot about Driven. That was pretty good. But what then he was doing like Get Carter and I See You and oh, all these God. other like straight to DVD movies. What about that one where he did with Ray? Uh, Ray, Ray oh, jeez, man. I What's think a Cop movie. Cop, oh, Cop, Cop Land. Land. Cop right. Land. He did have Cop Land was actually ninety seven. Yeah. Right. So that was his last great movie. But that wasn't a like. We're putting Stallone in big letters above the title, and this is a Stallone no, some blockbuster, means. right? I mean, that kind of ended with Judge Dredd yeah. until he came back in the 2000s and His started Mecca making action movies, ended Expendables, with Judge and did a new Rambo and all that stuff. And then this this was this was kind of it. So Judge Dredd kind of ended it for him for a little while, at least. Did you guys see the 2012? I know you've seen it, Bob. Mm-hmm. You've seen the 2012. Clint, have you watched it yet? Nope. All right. Oh. So this is for for Joe and Bob. Then who do you guys think played the part better? Carl Urban or Sylvester Stallone? That is a loaded question because <laughs> it really depends on which side you want to go. I mean, yeah. if you were true to the comics, Stallone had the look. Yeah, Stallone had the the just general physique, the 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 big shoulder pads like we we're making fun of. Mm-hmm. I mean, he looked like the part. Um, now the other one did a much better job uh, conveying the fact that he was such a badass. Um, obviously he kept his helmet on. I like them both. Yeah. For, I, for, for what they're worth at face value. I think they're both like good for both different characters. reasons. What do you think, Bob? I would have to say Carl Urban is Judge Dredd. Okay. By a landslide. Okay. I love Stallone and yeah. I really enjoyed his vert, his little take on Dredd, but it was, it was Stallone playing Judge Dredd. I need a paycheck where Carl Urban was playing. Yeah. Judge Dredd. I agree, and I think it's the film's fault, really. I think Urban is better because the film did a better job of building up the mystique of the character, right? When Carl Urban's Dredd shows up and says, I am the law, and everyone's kind of crapping their pants. Yeah. And then in this movie, they played it for laughs, and everyone's kind of still laughing and shooting their guns off at him. Oh, Dredd, come and get us. Like, Right, so it just <laughs> makes, I think it makes, the movie makes him look better for that reason. So it's not really Stallone's fault. It was, it's, a, it's a matter of the way the films were made. They understood the source material in 2012 as opposed to 1995. Carl Urban, not a fan, though, of how they marketed that movie. He was very critical because, again, $40 million basically broke even. This is a quote from Carl Urban. He said, the film had zero audience awareness. Nobody knew the movie was being released. Dread represents a failure in marketing, not filmmaking. I agree with that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I feel like I found out it was coming out when it came out. You were like, yes. let's go. There's a new job. There's a new Ju- Judge Dredd movie. When did that happen? I found was- out about it like two weeks ago when you said we were doing this one. <laughs> right. And so that was eight years, nine years ago, and you didn't even know about it, right? Right. Could we play that clip from 2012's I Am the Law? Compare it to the other one. So we got Stallone up first. What is he saying? <laughs> He's burnt. I understand I am the law. That was good. But the blocks are this under arrest. Dread. Let him talk. 
This block operates under the same rules as the rest of the city. Mama is not the law. I am the law. Totally different. I want to see that. (laughs) Why didn't we do that movie? Well, because it's, it's not bad. It is, <laughs> yeah. it is a bad movie. You said it, it's a movie that didn't do well. Well, well box office wise, it counts, but counts. it's it was it's critically good. and fan. We can revisit down the road. Judge Dredd, two thousand twelve, episode one nineteen. There you go. All right. So, what is left to say about Judge Dredd? We got to give it some awards. Yes, sir. I just want to say I'm very proud of all of you guys for not bashing Rob Schneider during this whole thing. We love Rob Schneider. We, no. we, we said what we needed to say about him. The Rob Schneider wasn't a failure. It just wasn't, uh, he didn't belong. There. He just was himself. I know. And it was just low hanging fruit. Yeah. And that was that, you know, but Rob Schneider can take to his grave that Stallone sought him out to lighten up this movie. Yes. Right. Yes. Which is that in itself is worth its weight in gold. Well, let's give this, let's give some flowers out to this movie. We're going to start with the Will Patton award, which is the award we give to the person in a small role that was really bringing the fire and intensity. And, uh, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think for the Will Patton award? Pa, <laughs> pa was awesome. I mean, he, he Scott Wilson. Herschel. Yes. Herschel from the walkie. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Same guy from, it was Herschel. How about for you, Bob? Rob Schneider, Rob Schneider, uh, Rob Christopher Schneider. And, Sorry. And said, Oh uh, yeah, mean machine. Mean machine. Mean machine. Good, Ooh. good. Uh, I, I'm going to give it to Jurgen uh, Procknow the, and his vibrating face. The <laughs> angry. I mean, just from an intensity standpoint, I don't know if it gets more intense than than that guy. I, he was really bringing it both barrels. Top three performances, guys. Who, if you had to say, okay, these were the top three people in this movie. Uh, for me, I'll I'll start and I'll say that number one, I got to go with Stallone. I mean, he carries the entire film, and. Uh, I mean, people have been quoting this character for 20 plus years, right? I mean, so you got to give him his props there. Armand Asante, I had at number two. And then number three, I had the ABC Warrior as the number three performance. How about you, Joe? Um, Stallone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Huge fan. Yes. Huge fan. Yes. She was great in this. And um, I swear to God, I missed that scene. <laughs> It's a small part, a small yeah. part, but she really, uh, uh, Diane Lane. Really? Yeah. See? Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Scott, you picked a roll about that. I push around a shopping cart. Yeah. <laughs> It was more. I got more acting out of that robot in the shopping cart than Diane Lane gave. So does your movie. mom. She, oh, wow. What does that even mean? Wait, isn't that your mom? So your, my, my mom, mom is your mom. Wait, wait, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. There's a joke here. It's All right, inside. Joke. What are your top three, Clint? Man, top three is hard. Um, for the for the third spot, for me, it's like spread all over between a whole bunch of different characters. I don't know which one I want to really give it to, but the top two, same top two as you. I'm flopping them though. I actually really dug Rico. I like okay. the character 100. I'm a I'm a villain fan in general. Uh, I mean, I thought it was fantastic. Stallone did a great job at being Sylvester Stallone. I don't think he did a great job at being Judge Dredd. You're right. I agree with that. But Rico did a fantabulous job. That yeah. is a patented word. Fantabulous? Was, was fantabulous job at being a villain. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Bobbert. I would say Armin Hassan for reasons that Clint just got done talking about. Yep. Stallone and Rob Schneider. All right. Rob Schneider gets another vote here. Perfect. All right, well, and then for our top five quotes, which is what we do every single episode, we uh, praise some of the writing. Sometimes it's on here because it's good. Sometimes it's on here because it's funny because of how bad it is. But for number five, you got to go with the kill-off line, right? I mean, it's not a 90s action movie without it. It's number five I had. Good year. As (laughs) (laughs) number five. Uh, Number four, I had eat recycled food. It's good for the environment and okay Okay. for you. Uh, Number three was that heartfelt line and return from Rico to Stallone where he said, I'm the only one who ever loved you. He said, I'll be the judge of that. (laughs) So it's like kind of cheesy because Stallone ruins a great moment from Armand Asante. But, uh, you know, it's a good pun because it's a judge movie. Uh, Number two. It's got to be Mega City Municipal Code 4722. Illegal use of city electricity. How do you plead? <laughs> I knew you said that. Yeah. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, number one, we played it earlier, right? It's a lie. The evidence has been falsified. It's impossible. I never broke the law. I am the law. Roll credits. Roll credits. have been great. Well, what's left, guys, to say about Judge Dredd? Was it ahead of its time? Was it? No. <laughs> 
was it futuristic and yet at the same time incredibly dated? Well, yes. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the problem when you look at all of these movies yeah. that were done in the 80s yeah. or the 90s <laughs> as the future, and then the future changed so yeah. drastically in, like, 97. Yeah. Um, like, legitimately, the Pepsi logo is wrong. This is a different movie, but I'm just saying, like, these same type of movies, the Pepsi logo changed from a million years it was one thing, so everything that had it in it for the future is wrong. Right. The same with this, the CRT screen. Right. So glaringly old. Right. But... They didn't know that we were going to have flat panel monitors coming up in just no time at right. all. Right. So will this ever be accepted as the revolutionary piece of cinema that it is? Or was it, as one reviewer wrote, another stepping stone in Stallone's long walk to the bottom? Of course not. Because Stallone was never near the bottom. This man wrote his own ticket and was at the top of the game for a long time. Judge Dredd wasn't his best. And it wasn't his worst. It might break all the laws of filmmaking, but that doesn't matter because in Hollywood in 1994, Stallone was the law. Next he wasn't, week. He wasn't the bottom. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't no. the bottom. He was the bottom. Was, I am the bottom. I'm not the bottom. I am the bottom. Well, thanks you guys. Thank you guys Sorry. for coming in and talking about Judge Dredd. Never apologize for being awesome, Joe and uh, Clint and Bob. We appreciate all of you guys being here next week. We are looking at a movie that I was obsessed with as a kid, as as ashamed as you should be for loving Cool as Ice when you were younger. I watched Howard the Duck over and over again. And, and I hate you. <laughs> and so we are going to tackle George Lucas's cult favorite, yeah. Howard the Duck. So join us in the next episode for that. In the meantime, thank you for being here with us. We appreciate you listening. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. What's not to love about a duck making out with Leah Thompson? Come on. <laughs>